In this video we'll be talking about quest design. I'll outline the 5 basic quest types as I understand them. I'll then take us through creating a quest and how to dress it up with a story. While we are primarily concerned with how to run quests in LARP, this video can apply to creating quests in any type of game, including tabletop games like Dungeons & Dragons. Earlier I made a video about the basics of world building, which you can find up in the corner. While it's not required to understand this video, it is topically related and I do use the terminology a little bit. Like in that video, I hope to give you a place to start the process for creating your stories. This video will have a heavy emphasis on game design. I'll try to be as clear and precise as possible, but if anything is unclear or you have a question, please make sure to use the comment section. I'll be happy to hear from you. Also, while you're down there, feel free to let me know how you approach building quests in your games. If you'd like to see more LARP-centric content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. You can also support me via Patreon, link in the description below. Now on to the 5 basic quest types. The 5 basic quests. I have found that there are 5 basic quest types. Acquisition quest, delivery quest, defend quests, attack quests, and disable quests. I spent time trying to take all the quests I could think of and strip them down to their base components. That's where I've derived these 5 basic quests from. We can combine these 5 different quests into interesting quest lines and add various quest modifiers to change them, making them more challenging and complex. No matter what modifiers you apply, when you boil it all down to the basics, you'll have these 5 basic types of quests. Acquisition Quests this quest is any type of quest where you must go, find an item, or return or use the item. For example, there is a missing child and you must go and find that child. The key here is that you are finding and obtaining delivery quests. As the name suggests, delivery quests is any type of quest where you must deliver something. This can be as straightforward as delivering a piece of mail or it might be more complicated such as having to deliver packages throughout the countryside. The key is that you are taking something from point A to point B. Attack Quests these quests are quests in which you are attacking some sort of area. For example, you must attack a castle. This is not to be confused with killing an individual, that is a disable quest type, which we'll talk about later. This is simply attacking and overcoming an objective. For example, attacking a castle. Defend quests. These quests are the opposite of attack quests. You must defend a place or an area or maybe even a person. For example, you might need to defend a merchant from being attacked by bandits. Disable quests. Disable quests are probably the most ambiguous type of quest and hardest to grasp. Many people would identify this as a kill quest, but I this quest type is something of a catch-all. As the name suggests, the goal of these quests is to disable a person or object. In some cases, disable might mean kill. A dead person is certainly disabled. However, the objective might not be to kill. Perhaps the goal is to overcome a trap or to find a way to disable a person without killing them. If a quest doesn't fit the first four types, it probably fits this type in some fashion. Using quest types. Okay, so now you know the five basic quest types. It's now time to learn how to use them. We'll talk about the two basic methods that we'll be using, quest modifiers and linking quests. Quest modifiers, as the name suggests, modifies a quest, making it more interesting or, at the very least, more complicated. Let's take the typical escort quest. You must defend a merchant from point A to point B. The basis of this quest is the delivery quest type. You want to deliver a merchant from point A to point B. To make it more interesting, we add the defend modifier. Now, not only must they deliver the merchant, they must defend them while doing so, making an escort quest. You'll have noticed that the defend modifier shares the same name as the basic defend quest. Despite the similarity, they are slightly different. The big difference is that the one modifies the effect of the basic quest types and one is a quest unto itself. It's a minor distinction, but can be important when you get into the more complicated quest mechanics. Another quest modifier might be time. Perhaps the quest has a timer as well, requiring you to finish escorting the merchant within 3 hours. Quest modifiers are anything that modifies a quest in some way to alter how you are required to achieve the basic quest objective. I don't have an extensive list of these modifiers, I don't even have an ongoing list, but if people would find it useful, I could be convinced to make one. Leave a comment if it's something that you'd like to have. Now, the other method we'll be using to create more complicated quests is linking quests. Through this method, we make our quest objectives longer and often more complicated. You can think about this method like linking individual quest segments in an overall larger quest. For example, you might want to create a quest where your players attack a castle, then turn around and have to defend it from invaders. This is the combining of the attacking quest and the defending quest. The next step in the creation process is linking quests which have been modified. In most cases when creating a quest you'll be doing this. Let's link the attack quest and the defend quest with a time modifier. The first segment of the quest is to attack the castle. 
The second segment is the defend quest. They must now defend the castle. We then add the time modifier and say that they must defend the castle for five minutes to complete the quest. We'll be talking about that more when we get into creating our own quest, which we're just about to do. Creating a story with quests. Now that we've talked about the five basic quest types and how you can connect and modify them, it's time for us to create a story using these quests. You can take two approaches, very similar to the macro and the micro approaches talked about in the world building video. The first approach is similar to the micro approach, called the mechanic approach. If you start with certain mechanics in mind, you're more likely to expand on those mechanics and situate it in the story. The second approach, the story approach. In this approach, you create a story for your quest and then apply mechanics to tell said story. This is very similar to the macro approach to world building, where you look at a larger picture first. You can also combine the approaches, which is often the case in my experience. For example, you might have a basic idea for a quest mechanic, then you create a story to use that quest mechanic. While working on the story, you might find that you need to make the quest more complex to fit the story that you're wanting to tell. No matter which approach you end up using, you'll probably take an overall basic quest type and create a longer quest by sandwiching in linked and modified quest segments. Let us start with a simple story quest. The players are tasked with going to the castle Wyvern and retrieving the Orb of Chaos and returning it to King Thelius. The problem is that the Horde of Chaos is also hunting down the orb. This sounds like a simple acquisition quest, but let's make it a bit more complicated by linking quests and adding quest modifiers. Let's go ahead and break the quest down into three different quest segments. We'll link an attack segment, a defend segment with the modifier of time, and end with a delivery segment with the modifier of defend. Overall, this will create a more complicated acquisition quest. The first segment is attacking Castle Wyvern to get inside. Once you're inside, the second segment is defending the castle from the Horde of Chaos for five minutes, while the players look for the Orb of Chaos. Once the five minutes have passed and they have found the Orb of Chaos, the third segment begins, which is a delivery segment, with the defending modifier. The players need to return the Orb of Chaos to King Thelius while defending it from the Horde of Chaos. Once they return the orb, then the quest is over and they've completed the three segment quest. Final thoughts. Once you have become well versed in the five basic quest types and thought about the various modifiers that you can add to them, you'll be well on your way to mastering quest building. When you get down into the minutia of quest building, you might start to see some other patterns emerge, such as quest modifiers sounding like basic quests. The reason I began thinking about quests like this was a way to help communicate between quest designers. I used to ask those helping me to write quests to read an article that I had written based on this subject. Even if they thought about the quest differently, it gave them a glimpse at how I view it and allowed us to communicate better going forward. To be honest, I don't often think about the basic quest types and modifiers when planning out LARP quests, but there are times. There are times when I need to slow down and break a quest down to its basic components to figure something out. Sometimes we just need to zoom in on a topic to problem solve it, you know? I'd love to hear if thinking about quests from this perspective was helpful. Tell me if it wasn't helpful, and did I overthink quests? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, keep on LARPing!